Some time ago, I discussed the Mars space program, a bit about what it takes to get to Mars and the physical side effects of space travel. I also questioned the reality of a nuclear holocaust on the Red Planet. Today, I want to give an update on what's going on with the Mars mission and the state of Mars as of 2020. I also want to look a bit deeper into what may have happened to this planet in ancient history. If you've been keeping up with what's going on with the space program, the mission is Moon to Mars. And they want to start colonization as early as 2024, starting with the Moon's South Pole. This will be the focus of NASA's Artemis program. One of the things I found interesting is that on their website, one part reads, what is Artemis? She is the twin sister of Apollo and goddess of the moon in Greek mythology. Now, she personifies our path to the moon as the name of NASA's program to return astronauts to the lunar surface by 2024, including the first woman and the next man. When they land, our American astronauts will step foot where no human has ever been before, the moon's south pole. By the way, doesn't the moon's south pole look quite interesting? Working with U.S. companies and international partners, NASA will push the boundaries of human exploration forward to the moon for this program. As a result of Artemis, NASA will be able to establish a sustainable human presence on the moon by 2028 to uncover new scientific discoveries, demonstrate new technological advancements, and lay the foundation for private companies to build a lunar economy. With our goal of sending humans to Mars, Artemis is the first step to begin this next era of exploration. You know, NASA sure does love them some Apollo, don't they? Why is that? Who knows, maybe that's the password to allow them into space. The solar system is activated. Things are changing system-wide. A fine time for a space mission, don't you agree? A journey to the fire star. You know, I continue to discuss these things among others because there are people who still stand strong on the belief that governing superpowers around the world, perhaps, are behind many of the catastrophic events occurring around the world, such as the Australian fires. And I'm telling you right now, if you go down that road, you will get lost. So what we are doing here is taking a closer look at the worlds around us to see if what's happening is confined only to us or is this something that is not exclusively happening to Earth so that we can gain a better understanding of what we can expect in the future. So let's talk about the fourth planet, the red planet, the second smallest planet in the solar system next to Mercury, Mars, it carries the name of the Roman god of war. The planet has two moons, Phobos and Diamos, which are also two of the smallest moons in the solar system. Now Mars has a 687 day orbit, which puts us in reasonable proximity for exploration. But it is only every 780 days or so when the Earth and Mars are the closest to each other. And this is the best time, of course, for viewing. Also, Mars' rotation or spin, it's similar to ours. Well, 24 hours in about 37, 40 minutes. We've always known Mars to be a barren place, but 
There are theories that suggest that Mars was once devastated by the passing of Jupiter, which at that time was as close to the Sun as the orbit of Mars. When this occurred, it robbed Mars of its potential development as a beautiful thriving planet. Interesting, right? Here's something else that's interesting. The surface of Mars as you head toward the North Pole begins to sink into the planet just as our moon's south pole looks as if it sinks the closer you get to the pole. There was another place that was thought to have a similar topography. Hmm. Now, one of the greatest discoveries of Mars is that it may have been much like Earth at one time, with a good portion covered in ocean waters, and the reason many people think that is because of the rovers sent there that revealed places with rock erosion and sediment that would suggest that certain areas were once covered in water. Not a very hard thing to deduce, but they had the Phoenix lander discover ice beneath the soil, not to mention the condensation on the lander itself. So since recently, it would be safe to say that Mars had or has water on its surface and below. On the surface, there is a very thin layer of atmosphere, mostly that of CO2. A little methane, some water vapor, sulfur, and because there is such a thin layer of atmosphere, much of the incoming radiation is unfiltered. Mars already has weaker gravitational forces than Earth, so it at the same time has a much weaker magnetic field surrounding it, or magnetosphere. So while you have solar and other cosmic rays pouring into Mars, you have a stripping away of the atmosphere as well. A loss of oxygen, which means also a loss of water. The sun is way too much for an atmosphere like that to handle. We can barely handle it here. And remember, because we are at the solar minimum phase of the sun, there is less solar activity, which means that the sun is not taking care of the cosmic radiation as it would if it were in its solar maximum. But there is more evidence to suggest that the atmosphere on Mars was once much thicker due to the composition, color, and melting of the meteorites imaged there. They know how meteorites that are the remains of a meteor hitting the atmosphere and burning up are supposed to look and you need a nice juicy atmosphere for that to happen. I uploaded a video recently discussing some Sumerian Anunnaki lore. And if you consider one of the latest videos on Jupiter, the Anunnaki apparently built colonies there. And the face on Mars is suspected by some to be the structure that was placed as a monumental marker for one of their gods. The story also goes that the Anunnaki that lived there had to evacuate the planet because of Nibiru's passing. Now again, was it the Jupiter Nibiru or the 12th planet Nibiru, which by the way according to Sitchin would also mean that there are unknown planets 9, 10, and 11 out there if you exclude Pluto. Now because the moons of Mars don't have the mass to stabilize Mars like our moon because our moon does stabilize our planet. That's why it's there. Mars has a crazy wobble to it and it really shakes up the inside of the planet so it releases gases in a more abruptive manner than the Earth. There have been over 50 or so unmanned missions to Mars and of the ones that were successful you can now get daily weather reports of areas on Mars just like here due to the InSight lander. Mars is already a cold place and you would be able to see the massive swings in temperatures from minus 2 as a high and minus 130 plus degrees as a low all in one day. The ice caps on Mars it has been reported some time ago that they've been shrinking. Massive dust storms, dust devils forming racing across the landscape but let me tell you what to look out for when it comes to Mars. It is known that there are no active volcanoes on Mars. That's just the way it's been. But now, 
Whoa. There may be evidence of some volcanism in the South Pole due to the ground ice melting there. So what I'm saying is when you see evidence of fresh magma, if there is venting or an eruption of some sort, if they don't hide it from us, then that is not a good sign for us. So everything that has been happening here on Earth, so they are trying to blame that on man resulting in climate change, right? There are people like myself that say, no, it's not due to man. It's due to God and forces outside of our planet and control. And so they have been those who point to Mars and say, hey, look, Mars is going through some of the same changes the Earth is, and they constantly try to debunk this by telling everyone over and over, oh, no, it's normal. Mars always does that. They actually want you and I to believe that man alone can go to Mars and terraform it. As if the sun, these other planets, and everything in outer space has absolutely nothing to do with the atmosphere and life on the planet. There are two layers here. The layer for public consumption and the layer with ulterior motives present. Which does involve quite a bit of deception. But let's take a quick look at what they want to do with Artemis. So first of all, who is Artemis? Well, Artemis is Wonder Woman. She is the daughter of Zeus and sister of Apollo, and the Romans called her Diana. So, yeah. But really, Artemis is the Greek goddess of wild nature, hunting, chastity, and the moon. But she is more well known for being the goddess of fertility, which seems to be a common goddess trait. She is depicted with a silver bow made by the Cyclops, and she rolls with a pack of hunting dogs. A lot of them. She also has control of other beasts of the wilderness. Besides being the patron to young women, she is also known for being the goddess of boundaries and transitions. The Artemis program will land the first woman and next man. Oh, just like Adam and Eve. I can't wait to see what their names are going to be. And the purpose of Artemis is to practice for Mars. Because here's what has to happen. The first thing they want to do is just send a man up to the moon, not land on it, just get up there and back. Then put people in orbit around the moon. Next, they start dropping cargo and supplies. Then finally they land people on the moon to begin putting all that stuff together. All these things are divided into separate missions. What were supposed to be the Apollo missions, but that was cut short by Nixon. I know people think that aliens are the reason we never went back to the moon, but the other reason is because Nixon cut the funding. So the space program became limited after the Apollo 13 mission. The presidents that came after him wanted to focus attention on Mars. So, for the moon, the objective of going there just fell off. There were no real efforts to go there again until now. But this whole thing will help them to polish up the technology they are going to use to send people to Mars. They have to be able to first successfully develop a propulsion system that will carry people there and back. It has to be fuel efficient and fast. And most importantly, reusable. This is what Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are working on. Rockets, powerful, big rockets. Rockets that can land and take off, land and take off. Rockets that can do flips and tricks, cook dinner. And this will all allow them to build a satellite docking station or gateway in orbit around Mars, which is the first stop before traveling to the surface, which is another adventure. I can tell you, Nobody is going to the surface until they know they can get people back and forth from that satellite station. Then they will continuously drop supplies and have everything as prefabbed as they can, even if they have to use robots for some construction. They want a good setup before people arrive. After they have done all that, then comes landing on Mars and another landing craft. And so, what they want is a network of colonization from the moon to Mars with orbiting outposts and sailing ships back and forth just like Star Trek 
Well, not just like Star Trek, but you get the idea here. Now, will they actually do all this? I don't know, but it will be interesting to watch them try. You know, they want to seed humans there, on Mars. Just in case something happens to Earth, they'll have backup humans there. I tell you, they have some pretty wild fantasies like terraforming Mars. How's that going to work? I mean, what arrogance. You can't even stay in the ISS that long. How are you going to get humans to Mars, do work on or around Mars, and then have them return without them ending up with the body of an 80-year-old? Going to Mars. You know, demons dwell on these planets, folks. Nobody ever brings that up. Well, I guess you have to believe in demons, but this is why this whole thing is going to fall apart at the end because there are other forces, other entities that are kind of part of the environment that is out there and around us. But again, maybe that's why they love giving Apollo a big shout out. Maybe this is the fallen angel that allows safe passage to these places, at least for the U.S., because there are powers and principalities, and that one is controlled by Apollo or Apollyon or whatever you want to call them. But that is all for another video. You know, sometimes things aren't always what they seem or appear to be. Plus, all the other things we don't even know exist yet. So as this whole fiasco may be entertaining, I would not let myself be distracted by what the space programs are doing in front of us when it comes to the moon and Mars. Like I said before, I believe that Jupiter is a better indicator of what is happening solar system wide. Mars is going to go through things similar to here on Earth, but the difference being Mars doesn't have people on it to worry about. Mars does not hold any real direct threat to us, but again, something affecting gravity or affecting its orbit will most likely affect our planet. And we really wouldn't know the severity of that unless it happened. You see, most people can't wrap their head around the idea that these planets in our solar system were placed there just for the Earth in a cosmic dance to keep Earth the way it is or was because things are changing. Something is off and it's not getting better in 2020. I guarantee you seen some very strange occurrences, nothing to be frightened of, but some major things to keep an eye on. I have some other things that I want to discuss and then we will have to come back to what else is happening in our solar system. The ancients knew something. There are a few who I believe know that same thing today. And there is a whole mythos and dozens of stories and tales about Mars. It's the paranormal ones that are most interesting. Speaking of the paranormal, I thought we might get into a topic that is back down to earth, but still way out there. Until then, you can look further into this Mars madness, and I'll talk to you all soon.